I feel like this is like a bird top and you have like wings or something. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Madison and here on YouTube I film sewing and fashion videos to share my love and passion for fashion with you all. I am so excited about today's very fun sewing tutorial, making a dress that's just bold and out there and I've seen it all over Instagram and I wanted to try my hand at making it myself and share the process with you all. So today we are going to be attempting to make the bandana dress. I don't know if any of you have seen that on Instagram. This is what the bandana dress looks like. Um, I originally saw it from the brand Psychic Outlaw who does a, does a lot with bandanas, but they also are known for making the quilt jackets. So like making jackets and coats from old quilts. So I've had one of their dresses saved on my Instagram forever. Um, you know, like when you save posts. So I have all these posts saved into a folder on Instagram for project ideas so I've been wanting to make it for a while and then one of my sewing friends on Instagram who also happens to be a fashion design teacher in California um, made the dress right here she looks fabulous in it and so it made me definitely want to try my hand at making it um, myself so we've got a lot of bandanas to work with um, but also outside of seeing this dress on Instagram um, and just loving the idea of it it also kind of has a very um symbolic and sentimental aspect to it um based on my life so earlier this past year in january um, I lost my grandfather and um, my grandmother asked me if I wanted all of his old bandanas so he would like take bandanas with him um, to work every day and so she gave me this bag of all of these bandanas and I didn't know what I was going to do with them until I saw this dress on Instagram and I thought this would be a really cool project to integrate some of those bandanas um, that were his into this dress and then kind of get to have you know a memory um, of him woven into it um, because I think fashion can be so much more than clothes fashion can truly be about memories um, and things like that so that's another cool aspect that I'm really excited to integrate into this dress um, so yeah we're gonna figure out how we do this it's a pretty simple dress because all it entails is using all of these bandanas um, I got one in like every single color and um, they're all squares so all you do is just sew them exactly how they are you basically don't even have to cut any of them down so we're gonna figure this out along the way I'm gonna take you along with me and hopefully um, maybe you'll be inspired by this to try it yourself if you do don't forget to use my hashtag made with Maddie um, post it on social media use the hashtag tag me so that I can share it and see all of your wonderful creations whether it is the dress from this video or any creation that you have made with any of my tutorials or any projects that you make um, being inspired by the art of sewing. So without further ado, let's dive into designing. So before we get sewing, I wanted to kind of walk y'all through a couple of details about the dress. So if you look at the dress, you can see that there is a bandana for the bodice. There are two different bandanas for the sleeves. They're not cut down. They're just sewn as they are to kind of keep with this um, like square rectangle idea. And then there are two layers to the skirt that encompass three um, bandanas across the top portion and then three sewn below. I've seen some people who create panels so that like this second layer is actually multiple bandanas gathered but for our dress we're going to make it like the psychic outlaws dress and we're just going to use a total of six bandanas in the front stacked in two rows of three and then same thing in the back and then gathered at the waist so in total if we do the math that's three six nine twelve um for the skirt 12 bandanas for the skirt then two for the front and the back of the bodice and two for the sleeve so that's 12 13 14 15 16. so i'm going to use 16 total bandanas the bandanas are pretty long so if you wanted to make more of a shorter dress or maybe tunicky type top you could just do one row of bandanas you could also do two rows of just two bandanas so that it isn't as full but we're going to use a total of 16 bandanas multiple different colors um figure it out as we go so let's officially now dive in to the sewing construction part these are all the bandanas that I bought at the store to use for my dress and then I also have the bandanas that were my grandfather's that's a green and a red one 
So my first step is really just figuring out the color combinations and patterns that I want to use. And then after that, I played around with how I was going to construct the bodice and kind of lay and pin the bandanas in order to make the sleeves. It's not that hard once you kind of play around with it, but I also just kind of wanted to figure out what colors I wanted the sleeves to be and the bodice in relation to the rest of the dress. Since I'm using six different bandanas for the front of my skirt and then six different bandanas for the back of my skirt, my first thing is deciding the colors that I wanted to be next to each other and on top of each other so I had to keep in mind that I didn't want like a dark blue and a light blue to be touching and all of that stuff so I kind of had to do a little bit of problem solving with that and also some of my bandanas have different prints I totally forgot that different bandanas and different brands have different um, kind of prints on the inside so I also wanted to mix up those prints in addition to the colors and then once I figured out kind of the color scheme and pattern I wanted to go with I just made sure and stacked all of those rows on top of each other so that I would sew them to the correct colors and then get to sew the entire skirt together. So for skirt construction, we start off by sewing the rows. So we sew three bandanas together at the sides and then once all of the rows are created, we sew them together down the middle. And as always, once your seams are sewn, don't forget to press the seams open. So all the squares for the skirt are sewn together. So again, it's three across in two rows. So I sewed each bandana together and then the rows are attached. I tried to make sure and match up all of my corners and then I also made sure to go in and press all of my seams nice and flat so that they look good on the outside. So now it's about attaching this piece to the back piece and then gathering it. Once the front and the back pieces of the skirt are created, you are then just going to attach them together at the sides, although I decided to put in pockets with this dress, so I'll show you later on where I add those. So once my skirt pieces are created, it's time to start creating my bodice. So I'm using the same color bandana for the front and the back of my bodice, and I just made it 13 inches long, which would kind of be from my chest to my high waist. And then I'm going to figure out the placement of my sleeves. After doing a little bit of placement and measuring, I decided that I wanted my sleeves to fit on both sides, where there would just be an eight inch space in the middle, which is kind of like my neck opening. So obviously it's different 
different for everyone. So if you decide to make this, just do some measurements on your own. But I ended up just leaving an eight inch gap between my sleeves and then pinning them to the sides um, and then the same length down. Once I figured out my sleeve placement for the front of my bodice, I just transferred all of those markings to the back of my bodice and then pinned my sleeves the exact same way I did to the front. So once my sleeves were pinned on and I did a little try on, I realized that my sleeves needed to come in about 3 fourths of an inch on both sides. So I just made those adjustments before I sewed on my sleeves. And because sewing is all about making adjustments and doing tweaks, I ended up moving my sleeves down about half an inch on both sides as well. Okay, so I put the skirt on hold for a second so I could work on the top. So the nice thing about this dress is that the top doesn't require you to create a pattern. It doesn't even require you to have a lot of pattern making skills because all it is is shape. So for the sleeves, it is the square shape that stays. I have seen some people sew two um, bandanas together to add elastic and make more of like a puff sleeve. I also have seen people put elastic on um, the shoulders, so those are ideas you could do. But this is the general idea. So you are connecting those two pieces for the sleeves to the front and the back pieces. And this dress isn't really meant to have a zipper. I thought about putting a zipper, but then I would have to change how I sew the skirt so that I have like an opening and a seam in the back. So I think I'm just gonna leave it where it's loose and you slip it over your head because that's what I've predominantly seen. So after these are all connected, all you do is sew these pieces on. Um, and I think I'm either gonna cut this under piece off or just tack it down. And so then all you have is this shape and all you have to do is sew here and down here um, to create the overall shape. So it's super easy. Um, and I was going to measure this. So depending on how you want this to fit, your shoulder slope, your shoulder width, you're probably gonna have different measurements for how you attach these sleeves. Um, as you saw in the clip before, I made some adaptions for where I actually pin these. So from the top of my bodice down, this is about six inches that I'm pinning this down on both sides. Um, this piece that is over my shoulders is, I didn't measure it, but I think it's about 12 um, from right here to where it connects in the back. And then across right here, that just ended up equaling whatever equaled width wise once this was pinned. But we measured that it's about seven and a fourth. So seven and a fourth pinned across. This is six and it's the same thing in the back right here across. I originally had it um, as eight inches, but I moved it in a half an inch on both sides. So this now is seven inches. Now, like I said, depending on your like shoulder width, um, and your chest width, you can make those adaptions based on what you need it to fit. And then whenever I sew it um, on the sides, I am probably gonna sew it at an inch, an inch and a half or two inches to bring it in um, a little bit as well. But before I sew under the arms, we're gonna sew these pieces on. And I'm just gonna use a regular white thread so I don't have to change it multiple times. Then we'll sew under the sleeves, then attach the skirt. So there we go. After the sleeves are pinned, I attach them by simply top stitching over those corners. So I just used white thread for this rather than changing up my thread for every color. It's barely noticeable, but it also gives the bodice kind of a bit of character. And then after my sleeves were sewn, I just decided to cut off the excess of that fabric with my pinking shears. Now 
Next, it's time to attach the front and the back of our bodice together by creating a side seam on the sides of our bodice and then seams under the sleeves. So I just did this by putting pins in. I think I sewed this about an inch. You can sew more or less seam allowance depending on how loose or tight you want the bodice to fit, especially since this dress has no fitting style lines such as darts or pleats. It's very boxy and loose, um, but that's also what I like about this dress. So you're just going to sew down the sides of this. Okay, so before I attach the skirt, I wanted to make sure that the bodice fits because again, this doesn't have a zipper, so it's just a pull it on over your head so I had to make sure I could pull it over my head and that the width of the bodice would fit over my shoulder. So it's inside out right now um, because I haven't trimmed all of this excess for it to fit yet. And this is what it looks like. So I think two things I'm going to add to this. One, before I attach the whole skirt together, I'm gonna sew pockets because we always need pockets and dresses. And two, I think I'm going to go into these side seams and sew in like ties so that when I wear it, I will have some little ties I can tie in the back um, so that the dress will not look quite as sack-like, even though it is like a sack-like dress. So I think those are two adaptions I'm going to make, but this is the bodice. It's all good to go. Um, I'm gonna leave the sleeves how they are, but you could always add elastic so it's more puffy. You could shorten these, all that stuff. So now it's just up to sewing the skirt together, gathering it and attaching it to this, and then you're almost done. So this is a super duper easy dress, easy project. And if you never even wanted to do bandanas for it, you could just use a ton of squares of fabric that are the same size as bandanas to make a dress and then it's an easy pattern. So there's that too. So if you've seen any of my other tutorials, you've probably seen me add pockets multiple times, but basically all I do is use my standard go-to pocket pattern, cut out four pieces, pin them about three inches down from the top of my skirt, pin them on, sew them on, and then when we sew our side seam for our skirt, we sew around our pockets and voila, magic. After I sewed the side seams of my skirt, I decided to cut three inches off the bottom of my skirt to make it more of a midi length because it was a little bit long with the original lengths of the bandanas. So then after I cut that off, I decided to, obviously it's a raw edge, we're going to use our serger to finish the raw edges of that fabric and then we're just going to press up the bottom half an inch to create our hem. And I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but if you are a seamstress and you don't have a seam gauge, what are you doing? Go out to Hobby Lobby right now and get one. Um, seam gauges are awesome for hemming. They're basically a mini ruler that you can make adjustments for how big or small you want your hem to be. And then you can mark and fold the bottom of your fabric along the way to make sure that it's even all the way around. So they're pretty awesome. Now that the bottom of my skirt is pressed and pinned, we're just going to sew that hem into place. Now 
Next up, we're going to put our basting stitch along the top edge of our skirt so that we can gather it into place. And I was feeling super lazy this day, so I only added one line of basting stitches. Usually I do two um, right on top of each other so that my gathers are a little bit stronger, but I didn't for this one. So just one basting stitch, and remember your basting stitch is to put your machine on its widest stitch. Don't back stitch, leave tails so that you can pull your fabric and gather it. And then once it's all gathered to the waist measurement that you want it to be, I'm going to pin it to the bottom of my bodice. I also wanted to make sure that after the gathers, there were still only three bandanas in the front and three bandanas in the back. So I made sure to match up my side seams so that it was very like cohesive and even all the way around. And then once those gathers were pinned into place, attaching my skirt to my bodice, I'm just going to sew it down. All right, so the skirt is attached and I just tried it on and after trying it on, the waist falls way lower than I want it to be and that is partly because of not really the straps but like the shoulder part of the sleeve. It is way too long even though the top looked all right before I attached the skirt. So I put a pin in where I want to raise it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take elastic and we are going to sew it here so that it actually bunches up and kind of becomes an elastic shoulder piece. And our elastic is going to be the length of how I pin this so that when the short piece of elastic is sewn to this stretched, it will bunch together when it's done. So that is what we are going to do to fix the shoulders and then we just need to serge this part and it's done. So the trick to adding elastic by this method is to cut a piece of elastic that is shorter to, than the edge of the fabric you're going to be attaching it to, and then you pin the elastic stretched end to end, sew it down so that once you let go, it actually bunches together because of the stretch. So it's a really easy trick. You can do this for the bottoms of sleeves, to fix things like I'm doing in this project. All right, so I ended up raising the waistband or the skirt about half an inch. I also added these ties to the side so that I can kind of just make the waist a little bit more fitted if I want it to be when I'm wearing it. And then for the kind of shoulder area, I sewed on elastic so that it is stretchy and that brought up the bodice, which brought up the skirt to give it a better fit. So I think we are finished and it's just time for the reveal. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial for this project. If you like what you saw, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you stay updated on new videos. See you in the next one.